there's a lot of really unique challenges faced by young mums in Aotearoa. You know, in life we can do really difficult things and things can just happen that really hurt the people that we love. But how do we decide to come out on the other side of that? So. Welcome back to Voice of Aroha ha, on Wellington Access Radio, 106.1 FM. Today, I'm Meg, one of your co-hosts. Left to me is... Oscar. And today, we are interviewing Bailey and Matilda. Do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, hello, I am Bailey Gardner, director of Yellow. I'm Matilda McAndrew. I did not work on Yellow, but I'm a big fan. Awesome. <laughs> um... Well, we don't know you very well, so starting with Bailey, do you want to just tell us your story up to now? Like, how did young Bailey become who she is now? Oh, big question. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm from New Zealand, born in Nelson. I actually had to pause to think about that for a second because I've grown up all over the country. I've lived in Nelson, Marlborough, Dunedin, now Wellington, a bit of time on the West Coast, a bit of it in Australia, moved around a lot. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, I feel like the country is a part of me and I'm a part of it. So I don't really feel like I come from necessarily anywhere, but everywhere. South Island girl. That's a good way to sum it up. South Island girl. Um, what else is there to say? I come from a really big family. I've got nine siblings. True. Um, both parents married, remarried. So lots of parents so like step parents and step grandparents as well um so huge family and um yeah I don't know like growing up loved the arts first love was drawing um second love was visual art and like he's growing up and getting older and you know going to high school and uni sort of realized oh a good combo of that is film and um, that was where I met my good friend Matilda in film class at uni um, and we sort of started teaming up and doing things together and um, when we graduated we both decided you know what this is really fun let's continue working and we did photography and videography for festivals all over Dunedin and tried to sort of start making films together but didn't really feel like we necessarily had the know-how or the skills yet and so we were like well why don't we move to Wellington together and go to film school and try and up our skills? And so we did. And here we um, are. Yeah, here we are a year on. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you both study like videography and photography at uni? We met studying, yeah, I studied media and film, mm. majoring in that. And you were the same. I was the same. I've got you an English same. major as well. Yeah. Um, I was meant to have a theatre minor, but I missed out by one paper. And I just couldn't be... <laughs> I was like, oh, well, you know. But, um, yeah, film and media is my main main passions. Mm. And, yeah, I met Bailey in... It was the most um, hands-on course that the uni had. Yeah. The majority of them were very theory-based, lots of essay writing, and got very, you know... <laughs> Sick of it towards the end, but it was great, great experience. Um, and I got to, you know, work with Bailey, and that was beautiful. And then, yeah, yeah, we really bonded over loving actually making films, yeah, just chit chatting about it. Was pretty crazy. I didn't really like meet that many people at uni that I was like, oh, they really love this, yeah, Yeah. especially with film, you need good collaborators, absolutely. Yeah, I think meeting someone who was just as passionate about it as me was like, oh, and it is very much about like working with people Mm. and so when you can like do that and feel like you succeeded in it it's the best feeling oh yeah because you're like oh this is what it takes and I can do it yeah so um yeah I feel like Bailey and I really found that in each other that's awesome that you guys like have a complementary skill set and can work with each other and it sounds like you guys also like developed your skill set in those early days really well, like doing the festival circuits, just get experience and then to mm. refine that experience at uni and then to be able to carry that on after uni. Yeah. I hear that you guys have been nominated for some awards and doing the festival circuits for your film that you've already made. Yeah. Congratulations. That's super exciting. Thank you. It is really <laughs> exciting. It's, um, I guess, yeah, the really the first time. We did 48 Hours Together and one for Dunedin there and won a co-editing prize and best director and so... 
Nice. Um, that was kind of the first taste and of like, oh, whoa, we could do this thing. And, oh, what? Um, yeah. <laughs> and then, Career yeah. taking off. <laughs> yeah, honestly. And so with this film, um, Yellow, winning awards has been, I don't know, really crazy. We've gotten into most of the festivals we've submitted to so far and won for two of them, which wow. is really cool because I did not think that was how it worked at all. But we'll see. There's still a whole bunch more to come, and maybe we won't, we won't get into any of them, and that would be fine. Because <laughs> yeah. chuck your head in the ring, you know, like that's <laughs> yeah, awesome. Exactly. That's I, awesome. The worst thing they can say is no. Exactly. Like, with anything in life, you know. That sounds like the best thing they can say is, "Here's your first prize." <laughs> yeah, honestly, that was. It was like, Here's your fun. Oscar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, on your way there. Um, about the film Yellow, do you want to tell us about it? I don't know anything about it. Yeah, um, it's kind of a hard one to explain. Um, it's, I think, as a base, it is about three women, um, grandmother, mother, daughter, so three generations of the same family. And the kind of key idea is that the grandmother and her daughter um, are both young mothers, so they have kids really young. And so the film sort of deals with the ins and outs of their relationship through this huge fight they have one night. Um, and I guess like all the ways, you know, this sort of fight, all the ways in which they feel like they've failed each other or um, disappointed each other and sort of projecting that um, sort of come out. And in the heat of it all, the daughter sort of leaves the car and disappears for the next like 15 years or so. And the second half of the film is the grandmother talking to her granddaughter, who she sort of adopted, um, and sort of explaining to her why she doesn't have a mum anymore. And there's this tension, I guess, of guilt attached to it. Um, and I guess that sense of self-failure and disappointment. And um, I don't know, I guess the whole idea about it is that, you know, in life we can do really difficult things and things can just happen that really hurt the people that we love um but how do we decide to come out on the other side of that so in the, at the end of the film the granddaughter decides to decides to forgive her grandmother maybe she's not there yet because forgiveness is a really long process but I think in my mind that decision is key and that's like a step forward to I guess healing that relationship for them yeah wow I can, I can see why there's a lot of interest in this movie. It sounds like it's a really interesting topic, a really fascinating relationship dynamic. And, yeah, like, the arc of motherhood is, like, the biggest evolution anyone can make. So that's, mm. it sounds really fascinating to think, like, to discuss all the ins and outs and complications of that. Yeah. Especially, like, as the um, daughter possibly learns more about their mother's perspective from her own young mothering experience? Mm, I mean, I think for me, that was exactly what this film was. I, you know, I don't want to go too much into it, but, like, I have um, quite a complicated family relationship. Um, and I had a lot of issues with my mum growing up, and I saw her having a lot of issues with her mum because also, same thing, you know, had kids as teenagers and... One of my sisters also has had a kid as a teenager and I think there's a lot of really unique challenges faced by young mums in Aotearoa and I think the way we treat young mums in New Zealand as well is really, it's really interesting. I think there's some problems with it um, and, you know, for a really long time, I guess the issues I had with the women in my family, I really blamed them for it. Um, with that, And as I get older and I get to the age they were when they had kids, I sort of see another side to it and sort of see how human they are and that humans can make mistakes. And, you know, a little mistake can hurt people hugely, but, you know, no one means for it to happen, I guess, you know. So, um, yeah, I guess that was me sort of understanding those relationships and the relationships between them as well and just trying to explore that, I suppose, and hopefully a helpful way. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, wow. Oh, thanks. <laughs> no, I think that's really beautiful, like that growth that happens over time and as people, there's obviously a lot of hurt that could come from that, but as people reconnect and forgive, just the growth that can come from that is quite beautiful, yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, that makes me think about a lot of things actually, like the like those transitions that happen as you get older, like one of them is that you start to see 
your family and people around you as three-dimensional human beings mm. with a full complexity and a humanity all on to their own. Yeah. And mm. I think like that's that's a kind of challenging thing to go through as it like as you get older to kind of reconcile these three-dimensional <laughs> figures in your life. Mm. But, They're not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They don't know all the secrets of the universe. Yeah. 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 They've grown up in their own context. And yeah. They, yeah. That's really interesting. Wow. I think that, that also that, um, like, navi- reflecting on navigating the influence you have on other people is also a really interesting mm. dynamic that you brought up. I think that's a, that's a really fascinating and blurry dimension in a, like, between relationships. Mm. Like, because um, you can't fully control the, the response from someone else because, mm. like, at some point it's their bag. But I think you can take some responsibility for the context that you give another person to respond to mm. and I think yeah that's that's a fascinating dynamic and yeah I, th- I think that's all you can do really I think trying I think to it. yeah and like acknowledge and recognize a person in as much of their I guess unique context and humanness as you can mm. that's generate like that that I think paying attention to that and responding to that is a really I guess, nice form of generosity, if that makes sense. Um, And it's an extremely hard thing to do, but I think that, I don't know, I just think that that's really important. Yeah. 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 With your kind of filmmaking style and the themes you like to bring into your films, do you have any inspirations, like directors, that kind of thing? Um, I think something that's weird about me is that I feel very fragmented and there's not a lot of connections in many ways like one of my favorite filmmakers is David Lynch but at the same time I couldn't name a single one of his films as one of my favorite films you know um and he's often been called like quite misogynistic in many ways and sort of really creepy and I don't know I just think he's great the Um, art and the artist is a tricky barrier as well yeah um I think (laughs) There's a lot of sort of, (laughs) this is weird, but someone I've been thinking about a lot recently is um, Catherine Hardwick, who actually directed the first Twilight film. And I don't really want to like call on Twilight as my influence at all, but I think... (laughs) Cinema (laughs) icon, surely. I think there is something to be said for... She's got this other film, 13, which I'm really obsessed with at the moment. And... I think her style in that film is so realised and interesting that I feel like if she'd been allowed, A, to direct more of the Twilight films, but do more with her style as a woman in Hollywood, they would have ended up being a way more interesting series of films than they are. And so I think, yeah, I guess what fascinates me about her is just, I guess, like women having trust and positions of power to do something maybe a little bit edgy and stylistic and um mm. a bit yeah just i don't know that trust yeah is really did important she direct cool. all the twilight films no she no. only did the first and the rest of them are directed oh by, she only did the first yeah that's men, right which i think is not it took over yeah. oh wow yeah it does change things i think yeah. it does i think especially when you're a teenage girl and you've got someone with that perspective directing you i think it does change the perspective and I think you feel that I don't know especially with a film like 13 which um I don't know is so focused on that experience of being a teenage girl and the sort of conflict with you have with your your mum especially yeah I don't know I'm just yeah really fascinated by relationships between women in media um especially conflictual ones not just because of my sort of history and fascination, but I think they're not, there's a lot of space still to sort of be explored with mother-daughter relationships. Like I feel like we see a lot of father-son relationships. It's very common. Um, But yeah, I just think there's a lot of ground to be explored. No, I totally agree. I think especially Mm. with some of our recent media, like say Turning Red, Everything Everywhere Mm. All at Once, especially with that getting so many Oscar noms. Love Everything Everywhere All at Once. Such a great film. Great movie. I think that mother-daughter, oh, such good taste. Mm. That mother-daughter relationship is really getting explored more. I kind of want to shoot the same question to you, Matilda, before you take a sip. My inspos. Your inspos, your directors. Um, Oh, it's hard, isn't it? Everything Everywhere All at Once. I rewatched it the other day because I saw it 
I think twice in cinema because I used to oh, work no. at a cinema. So it was good. I could just kind of pop it in and <laughs> see see all the movies. Um, but I loved that and the way it had all of these like, I don't know, the way it wasn't afraid to just completely think outside the box. Like I love films like that and like mm. filmmakers who, I don't yeah, go beyond. Like I love Charlie... Charlie Kaufman, mm-hmm. who um, has written a lot of, like, he wrote everything, uh, not everything, blah, blah, blah. he wrote Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, which is, I love, I think it's quite, like, I've talked to some people who are like, I just don't get it, but I don't know, it speaks to me, um, and directed a few movies, which I like as well, but, yeah, it's hard, I feel like I am constantly kind of changing what I'm, what I'm loving at the moment. But That's the best way to be. And yeah. And kind of diverse inspirations. Yeah. I mean, I'm always changing in the moment. Can so. you think of anything that I've... That you love? That I love? Ooh. I'm kind I of... I was going to say Charlie Kaufman. Uh, Charlie Kaufman. So, I really like Charlie Kaufman. Everything all at once. Yeah. I love you. I what watch... Girls. Oh, and I love the TV show Girls. Is that Lena Dunham? Lena Dunham. Yes. yes. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Matilda got me onto that, actually. I was, it was watching really it last good. night. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just think I love the, yeah, just exploring the dynamic between people, like in particular because that show is like girls who are our age Mm. and that's really nice to see. And a little bit dysfunctional? A little bit. A lot, but a lot. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, This this conversation has been fascinating and it kind of makes me, it makes me curious what you guys thought of the Barbie movie in lots of ways. Partly because like (laughs) as a film that... Broke strides yeah. in lots of ways, and it also platformed a really interesting mother daughter relationship slash dynamic slash conversations. Mm. Do I Bailey do uh, it in <laughs> I liked Barbie. I liked I Barbie. It was. I also liked Barbie. <laughs> Did but you I like have... Barbie? <laughs> <laughs> I like Barbie. I want to hear Bailey's thoughts before I'm I voice my thoughts. Okay. Oh, well, we all like Barbie, so I feel like I can't say too no. Much. No, go uh, for it. Please the... criticize. Um, no, oh, okay. I, I, I did like it. I think that it is a important film to be made, but I, I think I. Oh god, I'm gonna get no go weird for it. with it. I think <laughs> I have issue with the, I guess the intersection of capitalism in the film, with a little bit of the sort of revenge feminism at the end as well like I've enjoyed it but it's the, the the bit at the end that I really take issue with is when all of the Kens get kicked off the Supreme Court and they're like can we have one and they're like no not until we do it in the real world and I see where people are coming from an eye for but I don't think an eye for an eye is how anything works And I think, you know, growing up, how many of us were told, like, be the biggest person, you know, like, and I feel like that's a part of that is maybe, you know, showing the way or being the bigger person, being a role model and being like, you know what, maybe we could have some kins on the Supreme Court and... You know, create something better. I I agree. A couple of kins. I agree. And I think I enjoyed the Barbie movie. It, it, it looked like they had a really fun time making it and, like, I think they platformed some really important conversations. Like, I, absolutely. Like that mother-daughter conversation of, like, the impossibilities, mm. uh, the impossible mm. expectations of being a woman in s- societies. I think that's really I, important monologue to come out of it. And I think a lot of us who have been on the internet for a while are probably really familiar with that monologue because I feel like, especially in tumbles, Tumblr circles, <laughs> that sort of thing has, like, gone around a bit. But I think that there is a significant portion of maybe... I don't know, middle-aged and, like, older women who haven't been exposed to that sort of conversation. And I think, and also men, you know, men, especially in middle-aged and older men as well who need to hear it. Um, And so I think, I don't know, I just think it's really, it's timely and it's, yeah, it's good. Mm -hmm. I think think it was timely and it it did do a lot really well. There was was two things that kind of, Fell short about that movie in my eyes. One of them was they like they tried to address the patriarchy, which mm. I think totally fair enough topic to take aim at for sure. But I think they could have fleshed out more what it is and why it's still entrenched and like why. Mm. Like I thought Alan would have been a really interesting character to be like why it doesn't work for both people. Right. And 
they the other thing with that is they 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 tried to kind of position but or contrast Barbie world from the real world as like a matriarchy, mm. but they didn't design a matriarchy. They populated a patriarchy with women. I thought that's an oh, interesting, interesting distinction. Like a, a a matriarchy functions differently. It's yeah. got different priorities. That's but true. like the Supreme Court example is a great example of them filling the same roles with mm. women, but not necessarily changing the assumptions of the roles. Or yeah. you know what I mean? Mm. I think Alan would have been a really interesting person to chat through that dynamic as well. And also, lastly, they got to independence, kind of like live your truth, like Ken and Barbie, live your truth. But they fell short of interdependence, which is how we live together in a better world or how do mm. we better live together in a world. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's the mark that I feel like they missed with the Supreme Court example. Mm. And I think, yeah, that's a really interesting point about the structure of Barbie world. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, I wonder if that's partly like, oh, well, so people with society, they can recognise... But and I don't think people are that stupid. You know, if you did show a really different society, I think people would get it. Yeah, no, that, I'm going to think about that for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it's been something that I've been thinking about since that move in. It definitely got me thinking. And like, mm. ha, ha, I kind of dove a little bit down a rabbit hole of, like, what is a matriarchy and, like, why is it different mm. to a patriarchy? And it's definitely got different value sets, different decision-making frameworks. Like, just, it's it's different, you know? Mm. It's not it's not. Maybe that's another part same. of it is that, like, not as many matriarchies exist. So maybe a lot of people are like, I don't know what that looks like. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I think there's a lot of, like, I definitely feel like, oh, maybe I don't feel that way. I don't know. Yeah, we don't have to keep talking about Barbie. I just thought that was an interesting, well, interesting thing. I was going to say, what are your thoughts, Meg? Well, I was going to say, I really liked your point about the Supreme Court because I just think making sure if we're doing a film which is trying to, I don't want to say soft launch feminism, but like to it, it was mm. trying to be such a general movie. It was trying to get a wide audience. It was trying to get boyfriends to come and watch it, dads to come and watch it, older ladies to come and watch it. It was trying to be really wide. And if we're going to have that version where it's like everyone in the Supreme Court, we can't have any men, mm. it is projecting a version of feminism that is going to be contested and is not what we want to see represented. Yeah, I think it's particularly, I mean, because the Supreme Court is such an American idea as well. And I think that film and that's, that soft launch of feminism is really important, especially in America right now with everything that's going on. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I I feel like they they could have gone maybe not softer, but I guess a little bit more negotiated for, um, yeah, I don't know. I hear what you mean that they've got yeah. a, a pretty, like they're trying to be accessible to everyone and by like through that accessibility they've kind of spread far and wide and not necessarily picked, like going straight to matriarchy might be mm. quite a big jump to take the public <laughs> with you, you know, in terms of where we are in terms of feminist understandings. But yeah, I agree that it should be platformed and discussed for mm. sure. Yeah. No, I think that's a really interesting conversation. And I think like Barbie overall obviously has made huge strides for women immediately. Mm. Like I, I'm really, as many critiques as I have, and I've heard a lot of criticism, yeah. especially some of the points you made, I think it's, I hope it's going to change things for the better. Oh, mm. and like female films get criticised out the wazoo yeah, yeah. Comparison, compar like comparative to male films. Like something I've been thinking a lot about a lot at the moment about Wellington, because I'm relatively new here, is that a really healthy artistic ecosystem allows bad art as well as good art. And I think a healthy ecosystem for uh, media products by women is the space for amazing, mediocre, middling, bad, you know, everything in between. Like women, I think, are often held to this sort of level of like everything you do has to be amazing. Otherwise, mm. we won't give you a space. And it's mm. like, well, we should have the space to be able to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas you know? they've had the time and space to fail how many times? Exactly. And they <laughs> like, just prop it back up again. Yeah, like, we exactly. gave you a shot. <laughs> and you failed. And you failed. <laughs> okay. okay. So talking about Barbie and the future of women in entertainment, what do you, Bailey, as a female movie producer, have in the future? What is your project in mind? I just want to say that was a very slick segue. Um, and also, <laughs> um, unsure. I'm writing a lot at the moment and with everything with me, there's like a billion pieces of paper that don't necessarily mean anything right now. But I think the general idea is, all right, I focus a lot on some of, you know, my, my mother and my grandmother, sort of older generations of women. I want to try and bring it closer to home and look at 
um, some teenage female relationships um, and romantic relationships within that as well. And I don't know, I'm just really interested in them and um, yeah, exploring that side as well and female friendships too. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, just writing. No, that's awesome. Cooking. And our last question is kind of like, what is your message for our audience, people at home? You've obviously, I think you're really intelligent, really smart. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Oh, man. Gosh, put me on the spot. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Love, 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 love. Like, I think it's so cheesy, but it's so true. Like, love makes the world go round, and we definitely need a lot more of it at the moment. Um, just everywhere, I think, especially for underprivileged people, minorities, women, you know, indigenous peoples, um, government, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think love, love, love. Yeah. Love, 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 love. love. Well, we love, love. love awesome. to have you here. Ah. Um, <laughs> do you have shout outs? Do you want to drop your socials? Anything? Oh, um, yeah. Go follow us. Yellow short films. Um, I want to shout out Matilda for being my ride or die through film stuff, especially Hi. when I was <laughs> stressed out last year. Absolutely. Um, the whole yellow team, Bachman, for, you know, working this out. He's like the most supportive person alive, I think. Um <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, like, the whole UB class last year. Especially the yellow team. Big one's going to go out to the yellow team. Um, my flatmates, my partner, Bruno. Yeah. That's awesome. It's great to meet you guys. And all oh, the best for the rest of your projects. Yeah. Thank you. Sounds very Thank exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Our question from our last guest to bring to you guys today is how do you define slash see former or current refugees? Do you guys have anything to say to that? I have to admit I don't know a lot about the refugee crisis in terms of statistics or anything like that. I guess if I can draw on my lived experiences, I mean, we're from Dunedin, new to Wellington, and there was a big intake of refugees down there for a while. And I always remember going to the Saturday markets and watching businesses spring up from refugees around the city and watching how much they contributed to the livelihood of of the community and Mm. I think that's a very human thing and I think there is a lot of I guess just dehumanizing of refugees and I'm like well why you know they're gonna come here and contribute and make things more beautiful and hopefully we can Mm. help make their situations more beautiful and I guess it's just also about recognizing our privilege yeah and because it's very easy to, you know, feel like you don't have a lot when actually yeah. you probably or like just like out of give. sight, out of mind for mm. a lot of people. I think they're like, well, I don't, you know, I'm not dealing with that. Yeah, you know, but I've got too much going on. Yeah, like, I think if you're you, lucky to not have to think about that. Yeah, and, and I think if people took a and second, be in they'd need be of like, a home. I have a lot more to give than I maybe realized I did. Mm. Yeah, so I guess it's just about like. Yeah, having a bit more awareness for a lot of people. Mm. Yeah. And actually being engaged, even if it's hard, you know. Yeah. Engage. (laughs) I think that humanizing comment kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier with, like, that three-dimensionality of humanity, you know. Mm. Like, I think part Mm. of that... um, I think people don't necessarily always understand where people are coming from or mm. even have context to even appreciate the different life circumstances where people mm. have come from. Mm. But I think, yeah, yeah, building those platforms and building those vocabularies to extend that conversation and yeah. to yeah. continue Getting to... out of the echo chamber. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I had a conversation with someone recently, so it's, like, on my mind at the moment, and she just said, like, you know, all anyone wants is to connect. Mm. And so it's, like, if you just sit down and hear someone's story I mean that's so powerful you know like even just the sitting and listening you Mm. make someone feel heard and acknowledged in their existence and that's I think that's like the bare minimum not the bare minimum because that makes it sound like it's work but like that's I don't know that's just really Mm. wonderful I think yeah Yeah, absolutely Mm. as humans just seeing other humans for, yeah, for being humans, you mm. know, not a, a label of yeah. refugee or, you know, like, I don't mm. know, recognising mm. not just someone else's 
light and happiness, but they're suffering as well. And realizing that doesn't have to take anything from you, but you could. And often help those things it, make you stronger. You know, yeah, I think that's. Those I mean, relationships. Yeah, yeah. If, if gives feels, perspective. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like w the best thing about hardship is that it increases your connection with other people. Mm. You know, your yeah. empathy and that how much you resonate and relate with other people for sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good answer from both <laughs> of you. <laughs> it was you awesome. guys are great to talk to. <laughs> So it's such a beautiful answer to that question um, here at Voice of Otaha. We really love that whole humanizing thing, hearing everyone's stories. Um, it was so lovely to hear from you guys today. Yeah, thanks so much. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for having us. Everyone remember to follow, what is it, the yellow? Yellow short film. Yellow short films. Follow Voice of Otaha. Thank you for listening to us today. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.